once we have that all set up, we can then begin to use Shader Graph and see results in our scene. So it's really easy to actually create a Shader Graph. With that package installed, go to the project window, select Create, and go to the Shader menu. Now this Shader menu has always been there in Unity, and we have still options to create standard surface shaders, unlit shaders, image effects, uh, compute shaders, and things like that. So we're not actually removing functionality and writing uh, your own shaders um, uh, using code, but we're offering the graph alongside these uh, hand-coded shaders, sort of kind of opening the best of both worlds to both uh, programmers and non-programmers. And here you'll notice we have three different types of graph. Now I'm just gonna create a PBR graph. It's really easy to create a shader graph. Once you have that package installed, go to the project window, select create, and navigate to the shader menu. And you'll notice that we still have standard surface shader, unlit shader, image effect shader. We're not actually removing functionality to hand code your own shaders. We're instead adding this graph side by side. So we have both hand coded shaders for uh, programmers or developers, um, people who are comfortable with that, but we're adding this extra graph functionality for anyone who wants to use this node-based system. So here we have PBR graph, subgraph, and unlit graph, and I'm just gonna create a PBR graph. And I'm gonna give it a name of spider robot graph. But of course you can name it anything you want. And once you have this graph asset, you can double click it, and you'll notice that it opens up a instance of shader graph specifically for this graph. What this means is if your project has multiple graphs, you can actually open up multiple shader graphs in their own windows at the same time, which I'll show you later on. Now, once you have this window, you'll notice that there are three key elements, this left panel here, the central panel, and the right panel. And knowing how all these work together is really the power of um, using Shader Graph and um, iterating through creating the visual of your shader. This right panel here is your preview. So it will show you what your result will look like in this uh, mini scene, uh, or it's not a scene, but this mini uh, preview render. And that stops you from working in your shader directly in the uh, window and then having to jump back and forth to the scene view all the time you instead can actually preview a lot of changes directly in this preview. You can even do things like right click it and change the preview to uh, various primitive meshes. So you can preview your shader on various uh, uh, meshes built into Unity, including a quad. And you can even select a custom mesh. So if I choose this custom mesh here, which is actually the head of the spider robot, as we're iterating over our shader in Shader Graph, we can actually see the result on the spider robot's head as it's being created. And of course, you can also position and resize all these windows, which is super handy. The next main area is this central workspace here. And you'll notice that we have here a PBR master node. And what this central workspace um, does is it holds all of your nodes and their connections together. So like that screenshot I showed earlier on, it would show each node um, with some kind of preview, plus also connections to other nodes. So you have this kind of spider web view of what the visual of your shader looks like in a node form. By holding Alt and clicking, you can pan around this window. Currently there's not a lot, but you can see this node is uh, uh, moving. And you can also uh, use mouse scroll to zoom in and out. So if you have a very large complex graph, you can zoom right out or zoom right in um, to view uh, up close specific sections. And the last window here is the blackboard. Um, I'll talk about that a bit later on, but this is a way that you would expose certain properties such as color, sliders, integer numbers, and things like that to the material inspector. So very useful for tweaking your shader um, directly in the context of your scene. Looking at this master node, you'll notice that it's using a physically based rendering workflow. So a lot of these um, names here and these outputs are very similar to the standard shader. So you'll notice that we have albedo, normal, emission, metallic, smoothness, occlusion, alpha, and various outputs like that. And the way that Shader Graph works is you construct your nodes 
and then output them into different channels of your shader. So if we were making some kind of lava effect, you'd probably generate some kind of lava glow of like orange and yellow um, and output it through the emission channel. Or if we wanted to do something like make our object very shiny, we would output a value through the smoothness and maybe metallic channels. So you have this freedom to output different uh, blocks of log logic um, in Shader Graph through different outputs. And you'll notice here that as well as having these outputs, we can also do things like switch between specular and metallic workflow. And you'll notice that I actually changed the update live, which is pretty, uh, the preview live, which is pretty cool. Let's make it transparent, um, additive, uh, double-sided. So you notice here that as I'm changing these settings to do with the shader, the preview and this uh, sort of sphere preview here are updating live, making it very, very quick to iterate through the visual of your shader.